a legal victory for the chaplain of the House of Representatives in federal appeals court. Long story short, prayer wins. Joining us now to talk about these things on this Good Friday, Chris Scalia, author of a new book on faith, Lessons from an American Believer about his father, the late Justice Antonin Scalia, and his faith. Thanks for being with us, Chris. Thanks a lot for having me. Okay, I want to ask you, um, too, about something that came out today, a, a Pew poll that talks about people, I think it was Gallup, sorry, Gallup, talking about the, the faith in this country, and they say that church membership in the U.S. has plummeted over the past 20 years. Percentage of U.S. adults who belong to a church or other religious institution has plummeted by 20 percentage points over the past two mm -hmm. decades, hitting a low of 50 percent last year. Why do you think there's less of an involvement of religion in our society right now? Uh, there are, I'm sure there are all sorts of factors. I don't think I'm qualified to, to identify any single one, but my hunch is that uh, one of the factors, and something I think my father would have pointed to, is that uh, the Supreme Court over the last 50 years has uh, made it more difficult uh, for Americans uh, to express religious beliefs um, in, in public. So, for example, um, invocations at high school graduation or high, sc high school ceremonies, um, situations like the one that the chaplain, I mean, that, that went well for the chaplain, but in, in a lot of other instances like that, uh, the Supreme Court uh, or, and other courts rule against expressions of faith because they, they believe it's an establishment of religion that contradicts the Constitution. And my father often argued that's, that's not what the First Amendment met, meant, um, and the founders actually encouraged expressions of religious faith because they believed um, religious faith was an important source of morality for American people, the American people, any people, and, and that sort of morality was important for the success of a democracy. Yeah, and the book is an interesting collection of speeches, of opinions, remembrances of your father. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that um, you included in the book is from a dissent uh, that he wrote. He said, this is from your father, those who wrote the Constitution believed that morality was essential to the well-being of society. And and that encouragement of religion was the best way to foster morality. You know a lot of folks today would say they're just not buying that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, you know, it's certainly not the case that you, only religious people are moral people. That's not the case. But for, for many people, uh, the founders believed it, and I think a lot of people believe it today, religion is a very good source of virtue. Um, it reminds people of what's important. How to it, it lays out important guides for how to treat other people, how to live your own life, and things like that. And and without that sort of regular church going, you know, uh, it, it's harder to find that sort of moral foundation. That's why the the founders encouraged religious expression in public. My father again and again pointed out that you know presidents from the beginning have. Uh, delivered prayers, they've thanked God, um, and things like that. So clearly that sort of religious expression, not proselytizing for a specific denomination, but religion has generally been preferred over non-religion uh, in this country. And my father w was upset that he saw the court going a different uh, direction. Justice Thomas, of course, one of his closest friends mm -hmm. uh, on the court, uh, and in life, um, he writes in the foreword to the book, he says this, Nino's faith, and people may not know, that's the, what people called yeah. your father, Nino. Uh, Nino's faith fueled a deep commitment to his judicial oath and the duties and obligations it entailed. That is what I saw on a day-to-day -day basis. His Catholic faith helped him to understand that he had no right or license to exceed his judicial authority or to abdicate his responsibilities. It imposed a constant judicial modesty or humility. And you and I have talked about this. There are people who, uh, you know, we've seen nominees come up before the Senate and be questioned about the religious faith and whether it would taint or impede their ability to actually be yeah. a fair judge. My father often pointed to the example of abortion, and he got this kind of assumption from de his detractors and his supporters. In the case of abortion, he, he was often afraid that uh, they thought he voted against, uh, as he did uh, in abortion cases, because he was Catholic, and abortion is against Catholic teaching. And he said, if that's what you think, I'm sorry you're wrong. I think Roe v. Wade is bad law because there's clearly no guarantee for abortion in the Constitution. If the Constitution made a clear guarantee for abortion, I would have to rule otherwise, despite what my, what my religious beliefs are. He was a conservative justice, which means that uh, he interpreted the Constitution according to its original public meaning and didn't try to impose his own uh, policy preferences or religious beliefs on the cases. Well, it's an interesting book and so many of his words and remembrances. So congratulations on that Thank you and very, and much, very fitting for us this Holy Week to have Absolutely. You. Thanks for having me on tonight.